falling behind three times late. The Nationals refused to give in to the Mets. And with two outs in the 12th, the rookie sensation delivered. That ball is hit hard, and that's a game winner. Bryce Harper, the Nets win it 7-6. Who makes a splash in game two to power the Nets further ahead in the race? does tonight have in store at Nationals Park? Mets and Nats getting together. Division baseball. Whoever plays the cleanest evidently wins. And it was a wild one here last night. You also want to play really well at home. And the Nats right now second to the Dodgers in home winning percentage. Some really good ball clubs on that list, including the Metropolitans so far. Bob and FP. What a night that was at the ballpark last night. And I heard some people after the game say, oh, what a sloppy ball game, this and that. It wasn't sloppy on the part of the home team, and they're second in the league in team defense right now. Well, they did all the right things last night defensively, and we talked about it on the last road trip. When you're playing in your division on the road as a visiting team, you have to play Trump-tight defense. Mm -hmm. You can't let the other team have more outs. They're the home team. You can't let the crowd in the game. And I thought the Mets last night with their three errors did just that. Yeah, and two other potential double play balls were dropped. They could have been charged with as many as five last night. Ian Desmond, no such problem at shortstop right now. This guy's getting it done with the bat, and he's showing us his great athletic ability on defense. Yeah, talking about clutch defense last night, Ian Desmond made some spectacular plays at shortstop. The barehanded play being the one that I remember the most, but how clutch has he been offensively? Last night, the first player since 1966 with three tying or go-ahead RBI in the eighth inning or later. Art Shamsky did it for the Cincinnati Reds in 66, so that guy's been clutch all season long. Anchoring the defense up the middle. If you want him to lead off, he will. If you want him to bat fifth or sixth, he will. Look at that with the bare hand last night. Ian Desmond, one of the best athletes in Major League Baseball. Leading the way, clutch RBIs, Desmond, Harper, a couple of guys really hot right now. The Nets, the Mets, straight ahead. Brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. And by That's My Boy, starring Adam Sandler and Andy Samberg in theaters June 15th. Gorgeous night for a little stroll down from the Navy Yard Station to Nationals Park. 
and the Nats are trying to win their 18th home game of the year. And if they do that, it'll be two out of every three so far this season. And that's pretty hard to beat. 71 beautiful degrees tonight. Visit train.com for an independent trade. Comfort specialist dealer near you. It's hard to stop a train. The Mets come in hitting 259, fifth in the league. They're fourth in runs, but they are last in defense and they're bottom three in team ERA. Josh Tolley likes this ballpark. He's on a four game hitting streak, six for his last 12, and he was two for four with a sacrifice here last night. Edwin Jackson, third career start against the Mets. One as a Cardinal, one as a Nat. No decisions with an ERA of 720. A bit of a score to settle. He made his Nats debut at City Field earlier this year. And last time out pitched very well against the Marlins on Tuesday at Miami. Six and two-third innings, a five-hit ball, gave up just two runs. One of those earned. Hurt himself with a seventh-inning errant pickoff throw. The first pace, it led to the tying run. Struck out three, walked three through 94 pitches, 55 for strike. So two-seam fastball, four-seam fastball. Slider curve change from Jackson tonight. Yeah, with the day off and the rain out and another day off, it's been a while some of these guys pitched. Now let's see the defense behind Edwin Jackson tonight. Lombardozzi, Harper, Morse in the outfield. Desmond Zimmerman on the left side. Espinosa LaRoche on the right side. And Jesus Flores doing the catching. I think it's very important tonight for Edwin Jackson, obviously, to go deep into this ball game. And these are the kind of games that he absolutely loves. Going out there and throwing some pitches, getting some early contact and going deep into the game because with the whole bullpen being used last night, it's up to Edwin Jackson tonight to go deep. 20-year veteran Wally Bell has the plate. Brian Knight, Mike Winters, the crew chief, and Mark Wegner on the bases. Mets leadoff guy is Kirk Newenheis. Checks in at 294. Had hits each of his last two times up last night. Two for five with an RBI. Scored three runs. And we are set for game two of this three-game series. The Nats have beaten the Mets seven out of eight going back to last year. Right in the zone, a little bit up in the zone for a strike, and underway at 707. Nets are a game and a half back of the Nats. The Marlins are a game back. Atlanta there again. Late reaction and a swing and a miss. 0-2. A good change up right there from Jackson 85 miles an hour looked just like a fastball good movement and If you remember his last out in Miami lots of fastballs went right after the Marlins hitters There was a time during the game late in the game where he threw 80% fastballs 20% off speed Fastball up and away seemed to catch the hitter by surprise New and heist very late and this one's off to a good start for Edwin yeah, just a fastball up and away right here. Check out the release point, the rotation. Two seam fastball of Taylor, 95 miles an hour. And New and Heist couldn't catch up. Thanks for coming. Kyle Kendrick at home for the Phillies against the Dodgers starting momentarily. Delgado and Josh Johnson in Miami. We'll keep you posted on those division games as we go along tonight. This is the first one underway. And Andres Torres, the center fielder, takes ball one. Big hit last night, the two run double in the eighth that appeared to give the Mets an impending win. The Nats had other ideas. Heads up. Torres hitting at just 224, two for seven career against Edwin Jackson. Flores setting up outside corner, and the breaking ball's foul. He kind of got a little Euclid thing going on with his top hand on the bat. I don't remember him doing that as a giant. But right before the pitch comes, he slides the left hand. Check it out right here, up on the bat, away from his bottom hand, his right hand. It's a little rhythm thing. Maybe to keep, see it right there? Yeah. No works in Boston. And he's a tinker. He's a guy that'll change his stance throughout the course of his season a bunch of times. Go with something that works. He's a leg kick guy sometimes. He'll spread out sometimes and ditch the leg kick. But right there, up on the barrel, slide it up, bring it down, keep your hands loose. And a 2 2 is a swing and a miss. Keeping the ball down off speed right there. Flores the tag. And now it'll be an interesting Jackson and Wright matchup. 
And so far, so good for Edwin Jackson. The fastball has been good. The changeup is good. And how about the slider right there? That's nasty. They'll throw that down into lefties for his kill pitch, and the first one was great. Here's David Wright, who's hitting 436 on the road. Three points behind Melky Cabrera for the batting lead in the National League. 350, or 365 to 362. And the on base percentage is at 465. David Wright is off to a tremendous first two month start here. And there's more. First to bat, getting on base as well as anybody in the game. We got it. He's good. Pitch away, hit out to right center, and here comes Harper. <laughs> a number three guy takes a big swing that can fool an outfielder, but with 19 year old legs, no problem to get there. Bryce Harper continues to impress. with 50 home runs now in the air and we invite you to see your authorized Dodge dealer schedule a test drive or stop by Dodge.com check out the powerful lineup a world of performance design and fuel efficiency and you can say that pretty much about the shortstop the way Ian Desmond is playing these days 350 average slugging like crazy against the Mets averaging an RBI a game and a big night here last night with ribbies in the 8th the 10th and the 12th Jeremy Hefter, 26 year old rookie, first career appearance against the Nats. Got his first big league win in his last start, a 6 3 win over the Phillies, May 29th. Yeah, in that start, he pitched a career high six innings. He gave up three runs on six hits, struck out four, walked nobody, threw 92 pitches, 56 for strikes. So two seam fastball, four seam fastball, curve slider change from Hefner. No relation. He's from a little town and I've driven through it for about 30 seconds called Perkins Oklahoma right outside Stillwater where Oklahoma State is located. And Juan Bardozzi will stroke one out to left center. It'll chase Torres back a couple of steps short of the track. Steve hit that ball pretty well. Let's set the defense for the Mets tonight behind Hefner. New and Heist Torres do it in the outfield. Catania right on the left side. Murphy Davis on the right side and Josh Tolley doing the catching. And how about the night Josh Tolley had last night? Blocking balls left and right with runners on third base, the winning run on third base. That jumping play he made on the pitch out, all over the place. Very impressed with his defensive skills last night. Swung the bat good, too. Best vertical jump we've ever seen from a catcher. All that gear on? Are you kidding me? Saved the game. Here's Bryce Harper, 
36 hits in his first 33 big league games. And he's hitting over 370 now the last two weeks. He keeps this up. He'll be flirting with 300 shortly. And I'm just as impressed by the on base percentage of 375. A lot of young players don't know how to get on base unless they get a hit. He can do other things to get there. 17 walks so far. He's only struck out six more times that he has walked, and he likes the confines here. 2 2. Well, one of the things among many that's impressed us most about Bryce Harper so far is his strike zone recognition, especially with two strikes. Here it comes off speed to the right side and booted literally by Daniel Murphy. Harper's going for two, and he'll make it easily. The Mets are having a nightmare defensively. That'll be Murphy's if they rule it an error. Eighth of the year. And the Mets have made 46 errors now. They could score to hit an error. We'll see. But because Bryce Harper's running hard out of the box and not just loafing to first base on what looked like an out, it enables him to go to second base. Ankles, elbows flying all over the place. The hustle of Bryce Harper once again. So a diving play at the top of the first. Getting a second base on that play in the bottom of the first, and already you never know what you're going to see on a given night watching this guy play. He's already made a good running catch. It's only been one inning. He's thrilled us. So here's Zimmerman. They have given an error. I don't see them flashing a hit up there with it. So evidently a two base error on Daniel Murphy. The Mets now 46 errors, as I mentioned. Only the Giants have made more errors of all the 16 National League clubs. Exactly what we talked about in the open, partner. You got to play Trump tight defense on the road in your division when you're playing for first place, especially. Brian Zimmerman breaking through last night, hits in the fifth and the eighth innings, an RBI, a couple of runs scored. He was on deck when Harper hit that ball to left field to win the game. Target in her half. It's a front door breaking ball that stays up and in. Jeremy Hefner, 26 years of age, 6'4, 216. Originally drafted by the Padres, claimed off waivers by the Pirates, and then the Mets did the same thing. The breaking ball, and Zimmerman now, the count 2 2. I was talking to Ryan before the game and he's asking about the Ross Detweiler they're at bat last night. And he was in a secret spot in the tunnel that he said was his rally spot. He went down there, they scored some runs, so he stayed down the tunnel. <laughs> and he had a hilarious line. He said, it was the worst walk I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> well, it was ball six and it came on a 3-2 pitch. Oh, we could laugh about it today because they won the game. But I thought that was a great line. <laughs> Detweiler walking ugly last night, but getting to first base. That was pretty interesting. And I know uh, you did talk to Bo Porter about that. And we'll clarify some of the things that went on last night as we go along. Because in this game, you're liable to see anything. Well, Zimmerman working the count back to three and two with Harper aboard. And a one out payoff pitch. Didn't give in to him. That was 91 way outside. And now the Nats have been given two base runners. STGinc.com. The government turns to them. In MLB ranks, the Nationals 21 one run games. Nine and three at home. That's really good. Six walk off wins. And over the last two seasons, a dozen and a half. That's a lot. 18 walk-off wins. How about a few laughers in there? I'm in. Yeah. One here or there. Adam LaRose gets under one. First pitch. High and deep. And a three-run homer. And the Nats bust out on top. That's what I'm talking about. Well, the Mets just gave the Nats two base runners 
And Adam LaRue says, I'll drive everybody in. That's his ninth of the year. RBI total shoots up to 38. He got a curveball in the inner half. It stayed up, and he was all over it. Dugout fired up. Edwin Jackson will definitely take those three runs early in the baseball game. And it's nice to see Adam LaRoche swinging the bat. Good at bat by Ryan Zimmerman in front of him. Bryce Harper getting on second base, setting the whole thing up. 3 nothing Nats. Here's Michael Morse. Maybe he'll look for first pitch fastball here. Love all over the dugout right now. Morse gets 89 and takes it. After trying to go curveball in. And LaRoche hit that one like he knew it was coming. He had to be sitting on curveball. Great extension, head down. Ball was crushed. He releases his hands after contact as well as anybody. That's how you stay through the baseball. That's how you create backspin. And as long as both hands are on the bat at contact, when you get extended with your lead arm and stay through it, you ride the ball right out of the park because you're staying through the baseball, creating tons of backspin, and that's how the ball carries. 0-2 to Michael Morse now. A couple of doubles for Michael last night, busting the ball out to right center. That was the second home run given up by Hefner in just under 19 innings. Close, 2-2. Two and two. The aforementioned and praised Ian Desmond on deck. Morris had a good hack, and the count's 2-2. Do we ever get tired of watching home runs? No. Bring it. Curveball down and in. You see where Tolley was setting up. He wanted a backdoor curveball in the outer half. And check it out. A little souvenir right there. He's fired up. Guys on deck are fired up. Base runners are fired up. And a quick three spot for the Nats. Michael Morris, another opposite field hit. And look at that ball skip off the grass. Almost got by Lucas Duda. And the Nats have four consecutive base runners now. That's okay if Michael wants to wear out right field FP. It means pretty soon somebody will have to make adjustments and then he'll get to pull some. Well, we talked about it tons last night. When he's going that way, he's locked, and that's where 300 hitters live. And by the way, Adam LaRoche, I forgot to say, there goes the no-hitter <laughs> because you got me all fired up with that three-run tater. Man, everybody's fired up. Yeah, we're fired up. I can probably say that about ten more times. Well, up to fifth in the National League in RBIs with one swing from number nine. It's been quiet for Adam. Two for 24 coming into that at bat. And a great way to bust out. Here's Desmond. Target away. And he goes right field with a flare. Lucas Duda right there. I tell you, the Mets don't make any plays look routine, do they? Duda stumbled a bit toward that one. They are what you would call an uneasy looking ball club on defense. I feel like defense wins you a lot of baseball games over the course of a six month season. It's something you can control. You can't always control your offense. You're going to be hot, you're going to be cold as a hitter. With Daniel Murphy and the rest of the infield. I mean, that's something that's got to be there every day. And it's not for lack of work. You come out here early, you watch these guys taking fungos all over the place. They're working hard. But sometimes when you start making errors, it becomes an epidemic, almost like a disease on defense. You see the guy next to you make it, and you say, oh, gosh, I don't want to do that. And then the thought's in your head. Danny Espinosa going opposite field. That ball is carrying toward the corner. It's a fair ball when Neuenheis catches it. The Nats getting some good swings. Most notably, Adam LaRoche, an air, a walk, and a first pitch blast. The Nats with a three spot.
three nothing early. The second inning presented by Luna. Call for the Luna double. Get your second room of flooring free at 877-241-LUNA. Now there are some dark skies off to the south and the southwest, but we have learned that they're moving to the south. So 30% chance of rain is the official forecast for game time, but Bob and FP's bootleg weather <laughs> saying that stuff is headed down the Potomac. Don't worry about it. How did I get in the mix? Because if it goes wrong, we can blame both of us. I was about to say, get the tarp, get the tarp out. <laughs> Here's Lucas Duda, top of the second. And for Edwin Jackson, first inning, 11 pitches, seven strikes. Duda on a six game hitting streak. He was one for three last night. He was another important bat that was out of the ball game before the eighth inning ended. Terry Collins drained his bench last night. Made for some interesting scenarios later. Well, there was interesting scenarios all over the place. He fired all his bullets in the seventh inning and the game went as long as it did and he didn't have any bench players left. No bullpen guys left. Davey Johnson didn't have anybody in the bullpen. Well, everybody was glad that game ended when it did and with the results. The skipper was thinking about pitch hitting for Ross Detweiler with Solano last night. I've heard vicious rumors that the first <laughs> baseman might have been the next pitcher. Is that true? Yeah, he was thinking about putting Adam LaRoche in the game, but his arm might have went with the baseball, if you remember. <laughs> that shoulder surgery. I don't know how that would have worked out. Due to end to left for Lombardozzi and a routine out. Four straight for Edwin to start the game. Slots, tables, and dining. The ultimate triple play, Hollywood Casino, Charlestown races. And only the Dodgers and the Rangers, who have spent a week more than the Nats, have been in first place longer this season. So there's the East. And right now, the Dodgers are scoreless in the second at Philadelphia. And the Braves in the top of the second are scoreless at Miami after they hammered the Marlins last night between or with two Dan Ugla home runs. And they were big time bombs too. Daniel Murphy, the second baseman. Oh, for his last 13, including six of those last night. Ugla hit the Pinocchio Dolphins with his second one about halfway up that thing you love out in left center field. <laughs> well, hopefully Mike Stanton will hit a low line drive and take that thing out. <laughs> Maybe he'll hit one so hard it'll become a real dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> you're never going to let me forget that, are you? Nope. Let me go there two more times. I'm a landlubber from the Midwest. <laughs> what do you expect? Where I'm from, we have crappie and bass. Espinosa throws out Murphy for the second out. Ignite your netitude with the Nationals' five-game flex plan. Pick four games, get a fifth one free. Starting at 60 bucks, check it out. Nationals.com slash flex. Some restrictions apply. Ike Davis, the first baseman, is next. Davis 0 for 4 with a walk. Three strikeouts last evening. That's coming off a pretty good weekend. They were in a position Monday to sweep a four gamer against St. Louis played a tight game lost it eventually. So they came in here with some momentum but they have a couple of bats that have gone quiet. Metro seven games over 500 at home one under on the road. I'm watching the velocity on Edwin Jackson's fastball tonight. 91, 92 miles an hour. And I'm thinking maybe he's pacing himself. Yeah, he did in uncork a couple of 95s early. And that's why I said that. He's got the 95 there, but I think he's thinking, I got to go deep into this ball game. I can't just go out there throw 95, 96 the first couple innings if I'm going to go seven, eight, or nine. Well, the only time he won a game this year was going nine. Second start after he faced the Mets. He faced the Reds here. The two hitter on one run. 4 1 win on April 14th. That was coming off five innings at New York five days before. And a four pitch walk to a hitter 0 for his last 12. He'll face Josh Tolley now, the catcher. Thank you. 
Jackson. We've seen Edwin Jackson do that before. Go four pitch walk and get right back into the strike zone first pitch on the next hitter. ERA good despite a no decision and then two consecutive losses at Philadelphia and Miami. Oh, there you go. Four pitch walk, then he paints the outside corner. Josh Tolley career one for four with a walk against Edwin. Tolley, a four game hitting streak. Just a click under 300 for the season now. Off speed, well blocked by Flores. Keeping the runner out of scoring position. A pretty good slider, too, from Jackson. Totally a contact guy. Usually when he swings, he puts the ball in play. He'll foul a lot of balls off with two strikes, but he's a contact guy, and for him to swing and miss, it's got to be dirty. And that was. Betting fastball, got a nasty slider, and like you said, great block by Flores. Nets fans starting to clap for a third out here in the second. And then he throws that one 89. That was fastball motion, change up result. The Nets, the ones doing the swinging so far here. He's a great hitter himself, his skipper, Davey Johnson. Look at those wrists, ready to uncork. Now let's talk about Mike Rizzo, the GM. He's been busy with the draft. Haven't seen a whole lot of Mike, but we heard plenty from him today. I think uh, people are starting to jump on the bandwagon, and, and we're, we welcome them to, to come on. And, uh, you know, if this is, uh, I've said it before, this is going to be the ticket to be uh, in this town. And uh, you've got a young, exciting team that's, uh, that's moving at 100 miles an hour all the time, and we're, uh, we're ready to take on the National League East, and, uh, and we're, uh, we're fired up about it. Built in great part through the draft. Some really good acquisitions around that. Trades, free agents. And a good ball club that Davey Johnson can work to his liking. And don't forget about the minor league development. All the coaches down there, the staff in the minor leagues, working all those tireless hours, riding all those long bus rides to get the players to the big leagues, and they want no credit for it at all. There's a good example right there. Randy Knorr down there in the minor leagues. Now he's the big league bench coach. But when you talk about drafting, that's one thing. And the Nats do a great job of drafting talent, but you have to develop that talent, cultivate yeah. it through the minor leagues. Not only teach them baseball skills, but teach them how to win. And they do a great job of that. And you're seeing the evidence right here. Lombardozzi, Harper. Guys Jesse. who know how to play the game. Well, they teach them how to play the game. That's a thing. You know, if they don't run balls out hard there, they go to another field and run the bases until they get it. They talk about openly at the minor league level winning the National League East. So when the guys get here, they've heard it for three or four years down on the farm. 
I just never understood why some minor league organizations don't stress winning. It's all about development, getting guys to the big leagues, but the Nats do both. They develop and stress winning at every level, and I think that's great. And the 0-2 pitch to Jackson. He takes the breaking ball outside. Well, you've heard over the years there's a Dodger way to do things. In the Midwest, there's a Cardinal way to do things. I think the Nats are forging their own identity with the way things operate from the bottom all the way up. First strikeout there by Jeremy Hefner. And we go top of the order with Lombardozzi, who is one of the best contact guys in baseball. So he's making contact over 94% of the time, right behind Carlos Lee, who, as a power hitter, is just ridiculous the way he puts the bat on the ball. He's the only power hitter among that group. And you can find out why the government is turning to STG. Log on to stginc.com. Labradozzi, base hit. We marvel at the nice, short, quick swing. And that gets Harper to the plate here in the second. The simplicity of it. Foot down early, not a whole lot to it. Doesn't try to do too much and muscle the baseball. Just drops the barrel to the ball consistently every night. When you have such a short swing like that, it's what you call low maintenance swing. It's easy to keep consistent because there's not a lot to it. There's not a lot of moving parts. There's no leg kick. Hands aren't moving anywhere. It's just hands right by the belt. Get the foot down early and drop the head. Simple but effective. Here's Harper. Target away. He'll take it low. Well, Bryce hit the ball sharply to, to the left of Daniel Murphy, who gloved it, kicked it. Harper kept going went to second and that got everything going in that first inning. In fact, the minor rattled Hefner who hadn't walked a batter in 72 ABs until he gave Ryan Zimmerman that ensuing free pass. Ball two. Now he gets a strike right here. This could be loud. <laughs> Well, the Nats scored just one run in each of Edwin Jackson's last three starts. And they have three already. Jumping all over at 2-0. And that ball is batted down by Murphy, who has time to throw out Bryce Harper. There is nothing easy coming to the Mets defense right now. Nats lead 3-0, third coming up. Five pitches, 13 strikes, no hits yet. Just a reminder, as you enjoy a cold one, look forward to Miller time later in the game. It's brought to you by Miller Lite. A cool baseball. I just like the way you can hear the suds fizzle at the very end. <laughs> Omar Quintanilla, the shortstop. The pitcher, Jeremy Hefner. And then Kirk Neuenheis. For the Mets, top three. Phillies have scored a run, bottom of the second. Shane Victorino 
his seventh home run of the year, a solo. Still no score, third inning, Atlanta at Miami. Quintanilla, six for 21 in seven games. One for two career against Edwin Jackson. He had two at bats removed from the game last night, and then they had two errors by his replacement at shortstop. Ruben Tejada was playing short when the Nats saw the Mets earlier this season. They've had a bunch of guys on the DL. Tejada has a right quad strain. He's been on the DL for a month and a day. That may be the, the guy they could really use because of their defensive issues. But we're not feeling sorry for anybody. Well, not when it comes to injuries. It's part of the game. It's part of a six month season. And every team has them, and every team has to deal with them. So, with the Phillies reactivated Jim Tomey today. We'll have to check and see if he's in that lineup against the Dodgers. And he is not. Another long count for Edwin Jackson. This to the number eight hitter. And the Mets got Jason Bay back today. He's on the bench today, available. Yeah. Not feeling that great, trying to ease him back into it. It was a little bit under the weather today after a lot of travel, not feeling good. Probably be in there tomorrow. And a 3 2. Don't want to walk this guy ahead of the pitcher. They also brought back Pedro Beato to their bullpen. He came off the DL, so they have their. Full complement of guys, minus John Roush, but one more guy than they had last night. Another walk by Jackson, two of the last three batters. And that'll at least give Hefner a chance to bunt, although he homered for his first major league hit earlier this season. Billy Burns is from Mercer University down in Georgia. He was a 32nd rounder just last year, hit 262 at Auburn. Last season, he's on a hot streak at Hagerstown now. So look at that 317, 19 stolen bases. Solutions that help you achieve your financial goals. PNC Bank for the achiever in you with our minor league report. He's ready. Call him up. Hefner, one for two with a sacrifice. Mets drafted him twice. He did not sign out of junior college. Bunts it hard. No play at second. That's a good move by LaRoche. And when you're up by three, can't take a chance on that. Three, four. Sacrifice is good. I think that's something everybody should do with a bunt. Looking for the lead runner first. Generally speaking, pitchers don't fly down the line. They're happy they got the bunt down. They did their job. They usually kind of take it easy running to first base. So you always have time to look at the lead runner, especially when it's a firm bunt. And why not take a look? Because you got plenty of time to regroup and get the out at first base. You don't see a lot of guys do that. They just want to get the out. But you always have time to check the lead runner. Obviously, Quintanilla runs very well. So LaRoche didn't have a chance. And like you said, up by three, no reason to start a big inning. Quintanilla, good speed at second base. New and high struck out looking on three pitches actually to start the game. Edwin Jackson totally overmatched him on a fastball away for the strikeout. That is out of play down the left side. Sixty five percent fastballs for Edwin Jackson tonight. Thirty five percent off speed. Last time out seventy three percent fastballs for Jackson. Do you think that count may go up as he gets through the middle of the game. I think so. He's a guy that's going to come right after you and I'm looking at his pitch counts for the year. He's only been over 101 time that was at San Diego. 
on April 26. The rest of the time under 100 pitches. And you would think of all the guys on this staff, Abbott Jackson's the horse, the guy that can go out there and throw 120 pitches if you need him to, but he's only thrown over 100 once. Yeah, and that could also speak to the fact that with little run support lately, he's had to be removed from ball games while he was still in it and hadn't pitched that many innings. 1-1 one, one coming. Laced into right. Quintanilla around the bag, and he will score easily. Michael Morse just bounces it to the cutoff man, and the walk is costly. The Mets are on the board. Yeah, leadoff walks have a tendency to score, especially when it's the eight-hole guy and the pitcher can bunt. A good swing by Neuenheis right here. It was supposed to be a way. See about a one-glove mistake right there. Flores setting up on the outer half. The pitch was right down the middle, and Neuenheis didn't miss it. Good job by Michael Morse to keep the double play in order right there, not try to throw out a runner up by three. It'll be interesting to keep an eye on Michael's arm. Here's Andres Torres. The Mets don't run much. Neuenheis is three for four. As I mentioned last night, the Mets are last in the National League with only 22 steals. With Jose Reyes gone, Angel Pagan gone for the last couple of seasons, and Ruben Tejada injured, they're just not a running ball club. At least in terms of stealing bases. You can be a good running ball club and not steal bases if you have guys who go to first to third and second to home intelligently. Or... You steal a base when it really counts late in the game when you're down by one or a tie ball game. Good curveball right there from Jackson, 78 miles an hour. A beauty on the Kinetic North America pitch track, providing world class technology and responsive solutions to our government customers. There's a double play ball. Desmond Espinosa, a dig by LaRoche. 6-4-3 go the Nats. Their second double play of this series, and that wipes out the Mets would-be rally. The Mets have another error tonight, kicking it all over the place on the road. 46 total errors on the year, and they've been hurt by one tonight. Edwin Jackson, a most welcome double play ball, and the big blow of the game, Adam LaRoche. He'll bat after Zimmerman here. Not a bad curveball from Hefner. He just missed his spot. You see where Tolley was setting up? Down and away. And he went into the turbo zone of Adam LaRoche right there, down and in. He got all of it. And so did that fan. Well, you got to catch that ball with a guy in a Mets shirt right behind you. <laughs> good souvenir. The Nats, a really good first inning. Zimmerman, LaRoche, and Morris, and Ryan goes up hacking. And again, it bears repeating, when he was walked by Hefner, it was the first walk issued by this rookie pitcher over the last 72 previous batters. That swing right there from Ryan Zimmerman. Shows me he's starting to feel a little bit better. 
This is the first time he's given the big old swing from his heels in a long time. And he lays off the slider. I've been wondering if Ryan might get a little more frisky early in the count. And they've been throwing him a lot of outer half fastballs on the first pitch for called strikes. And his forte is taking it the other way. He rocks this one to the shortstop. Keith Dania. That's a pretty good play. Yeah, pretty good play right there by Keith Dania. Because that ball was hammered. You can't hit a ball any harder on the ground. Than Ryan Zimmerman did right there and folks that might be the calm before the storm a couple of knocks last night big game a bullet right there and that's one that a lot of shortstops kicked that had a little hair on it nice play by Quintanilla all right Adam LaRoche what does he get first pitch this time it reminds me a lot of the ball Ian Desmond hit last night that would have been a tailor made double play to end the game yeah now the spin couldn't handle it but that ball was smoked not like that one right there. So he went 89 84 his first two pitches to Adam LaRoche. I don't think he's going to throw him a curveball for a strike the rest of the night. You can, as a hitter, take that pitch away. You've eliminated that by hitting a three run jack. Good looking change up, serious dippage on that one. That's what the game becomes fun. If you, if you go up there and have a good first at bat and you hit a certain pitch from a pitcher, you eliminate that pitch the rest of the night. And now a three pitch pitcher becomes a two pitch pitcher. And you could have a big night by going up there and eliminating another pitcher second time up to where he's got one pitch left. Now they might try the same pitch in a different zone, but that's when the game becomes fun. You have a good first at bat, you can turn it into a big night for that reason. Yeah, it's been fastball changeup during this at bat. Dodgers have scored two in the third to take a 2 1 lead at Philadelphia. Phillies have lost four in a row now, and they're a game under 500, five back of the Nats. And Cliff Lee can't buy a win. He pitched a gem last night against the Dodgers. He can't get a win. Two and two to LaRoche, and the shift is on, and that ball is booted by Daniel Murphy. I think that one's a hit. That took a weird hop at the end. He's shaking his head right there, thinking he should have made that play, but is he about 150 feet away from home plate right there? That's not an easy play, and that ball was hit hard. I think as an official scorer, I would be inclined to give a hit almost every time on a ball like that. See that last hop right there? That be he's in a place where he never plays. And the ball was hit sharply. Had some spin on it. They have not posted a hit yet, and now they're going to call it an error. Well, that's when you got to get a little home love from your scorekeeper right there. A little home cooking. When it could go either way, that you would one, hope when you're at home they give you a hit. Yeah, that one could change. We'll see. Because they ain't giving you a hit on the road, that's for sure. One on one out for Michael Morse, who singled out that way last time. So he's hurt the Mets now. Three times opposite field in his last five official at bats. Gets a good part of that one. Quintanilla to Murphy. And the Mets turn a 6 4 3. On to the middle innings now. The Nats on top. 3 1.
Inning now, 3-1 Nationals, and Michael Morris has definitely been looking forward to getting back with this ball club and being part of a win, a win like he was last night. I sat down with general manager Mike Rizzo to hear more of what an asset Michael Morris is to this team. It's on our Wireless Wednesday. He's hugely uh, important to our lineup. And, you know, when you're playing, you're much more impactful in the clubhouse, too, because, uh, you know, when, when you're on a DL, I was talking to Jason Worth about it the other day, when you're on a DL, it's like you have leprosy. You're not even, you're like kind of invisible. So it's hard to, it's hard to impact your teammates, uh, you know, when you're on a disabled list. And, uh, and having Mike in the lineup and having his uh, charisma and enthusiasm in the clubhouse is great. A lot of enthusiasm from Michael Morris last night after that win. He said he was relieved to get that first hit out of the way. That double, he said something clicked, and uh, he's feeling good right about now. First pitch, top of the fourth, and David Wright almost doubled. So Christina had our FCA sideline report. Visit FCA.org, the association for IT pros. Well, I'll say he's feeling good. You should have saw the display he put on in batting practice today. It's been a while since we've seen that. Maybe forgot about it a little bit, but he was hitting balls today to places I haven't seen anybody else in this ballpark hit him except for him last year. <laughs> David Wright still trying to hit the ball past Ryan Zimmerman. I think the most memorable homer I saw Morse hit last year was upper deck right center. Right handed hitters just don't do that. Gets the Braves. Capo Taco about 455 upper deck and right center. 0 2 now Jackson to right. And a fastball up and in moves David back. He flared one to center first time and Bryce Harper came racing in to grab it right about his knee level to end the top of the first. David Wright hitting line drives 24 percent of the time a lot more than recently and he's translating that into hits so the Mets turn to him the government turns to stginc.com taking us inside those numbers he's good one two The career matchup is David Wright one for six with a walk and two strikeouts against Edwin Jackson. Look at this. Where do you pitch the guy? Ball not hit that hard. Just well placed. And David Wright in this series now has three hits. Beautiful evening on South Capitol Street. Bob Carpenter, FP Santangelo, Christina Acra, Masson HD, and the Nats are trying to make it two in a row against the Mets. They've already beaten New York three out of four this year. 3 1 lead, top of the fourth, and here's Lucas Duda. That home run you were talking about off Christian Martinez, August 2nd, here, 455 feet the other way. And the one I remember is the one off Matt Garza at Wrigley Field. Up in the grass in the batting night, it was 466 feet away. And all the Cubs people said that's the farthest home run they've seen in Wrigley in about 15 years. Edwin Jackson throwing another one away. David Wright goes to third base with nobody out. Edwin's got to quit hurting himself on simple plays like that. Well, if it happens one time, you say, oh, well. But when it happens again, now you start to think it's in his head. I had a few teammates that had the thing on throwovers to first base. You remember the last one, the seventh inning against the Marlins in Miami? That led to the tying run. And that one right there was nowhere near. And the bad thing about that is, is once that gets around the league, now guys know that he doesn't really want to throw over so he can get an extended lead and steal a lot of bases. 
Well, and now, because of a walk last inning, a three run lead became two. And now, a two run lead is about to become one. Lucas Duda fly to left first time. Lombardozzi plays near the line. And the count's 0 1. Good looking pitch just inside. And the worst part about that is, is when, if you can't throw over to first base, it's not just a one base error. It's a 180 foot mistake. Because more times than not, the guy's going to get third easy because there's no way to back it up. Ballparks are so big with so much foul territory, that usually goes down the right field line and enables you to get to third base. So it's a two base error if you throw it away like that every time. Blocked by Flores. That's only the Nats 30th error of the year. That's the third lowest total in the National League. And now if you're Evan Jackson you got to block it out and get the hitter. You can't think about what just happened. You can't let that. Get in your head. You can't dwell on it. You got a guy in the batter's box with a lot of pop. You got to go right after him. And a bounce it is short. David Wright hesitated. Desmond was going to throw home and then decided not to. And the Mets get a run. Three to two now. David Wright was not going on contact. Right off the bat there. Well, the way Ian Desmond charged that baseball, he had thoughts about going home. But I think he made the right decision. Let's watch right at third base. Little hesitation right there. Desmond with a hard charge. If you throw home and you don't get him, now you got a runner on first, one out in a 3 2 baseball game. I think he made the right choice right there. You got a runner on first, nobody out, excuse me, in a 3 2 baseball game. We'll have to wait and see if that run is earned or not, based on whether or not the Mets get a couple more hits in the inning. And he's thinking right now he could have had him at home, but I think he made the right play. Tie ball game, yeah. Up by two runs at that point, get the out. Now he's fallen behind Murphy 2 and 0. And Edwin Jackson's a rhythm guy. When we watch him good, what does he do? He gets the ball and throws it. Gets the ball and throws it. Got a great tempo, great pace. He gets into that groove, gets into that sync, gets into that rhythm. He's tough to hit, and that's the way he was last time out. When you watch him tonight, when he's a little more deliberate and thinking about things, that's what he's telling you. He doesn't feel great out there, but that slider right there was pretty good. I check that one out one more time. 86 miles an hour straight down. It's a good pitch. Close a great deal now on your new Nissan. Hurry, the door to your opportunity closes July 2nd. 2 2 pitch. Laced. And look out. Ike Davis walked. He's next. Nasty breaking ball. Breaks a bat. Gets a ground ball. Desmond takes care of it. Two down. One of Edwin's better pitches tonight. And Bryce Harper made it all the way to the infield right there before he realized there was two outs. The Wallflowers are coming. I think he was watching Adam LaRoche, who was about to head for the dugout. July 21st, after the Nats play a night game against the Braves. Second of three postgame concerts. Tickets start at just $10. Nationals.com slash concerts to check it out. And he's going to love the fact that I called him out. We pump him up every night. We can show this. It's all right. Guys playing good. Team's winning. See, Espinosa was leaving. LaRoche was leaving. And Bryce was almost a second base right there. And he had a long run back out to center field. Michael, Michael Morse was running in. It's like the alarm went off and somebody said, head for the dugout. Well, that's what you do on defense. You see one guy heading off the field, you think you're wrong, so you just follow him like a bunch of sheep. Well, just get the third out and then everybody can join 
together in the first base dugout. Ike Davis, the hitter. Happens to the best of them. No balls, two strikes with two outs. The one thing Edwin's done tonight, he's kept the middle of the lineup quiet. Four through seven, 0 for five with a walk. Held on to that one a long time. Flores the block, two balls, two strikes. Graves just got two in the fourth at Miami against Josh Johnson to take the lead. Nearly a one handed swing to stay alive by Ike Davis. His batting average has to be a mystery to the Mets. Oh, for his last 12, he has struck out 56 times and batting a buck 60. This guy's a lot better than that. Targets in. A little slip right there from Edwin Jackson. The ball up in the zone. Either lost his grip or lost his footing. His average pitch count per inning is going up to around 15 or so with a long fourth inning here. Not getting that call from Wally Bell. That's his third walk tonight. And he's walked Ike Davis twice. We we're talking about Edwin Jackson in Miami throwing all the fastballs and to throw a 3 2 slider to a guy that's hitting 160. There must be some sort of history there. Or Edwin Jackson's thinking this guy can hit, but usually with the lead right there, you just feed him a fastball and hope he hits it to somebody. Josh Tolley struck out swinging his first time. Jammed him. Harper on the move. And he will get there to make that catch. The Mets score an unearned run. Ian Desmond will lead off bottom of the fourth. The Nats still lead by one. Abe Lincoln with a little capital bike ride share right there. And he wins it in a thriller, folks. I'm telling you what, you should have seen the whole thing. It was a thriller. It's time for Ocean City This Day in History. This Day in History brought to you by Ocean City, Maryland. Go to 
OCOcean.com and click on Summer of Thanks for special deals and discounts. Check it out. This day in history, June 6, 1892, Benjamin Harrison becomes the first U.S. president to attend a major league game when he watches Cincinnati beat Washington 6-5 to in 11 innings. And Johnny Holiday told me that was a fantastic game. You should have been there. I was at the Smithsonian today checking out the president's thing, and I found out that William Howard Taft, the 27th president of the United States, started the seventh inning stretch. He used to go to ball games and sit there. He was 300 pounds, and he would sit in the seats. In the sixth or seventh inning, he'd get up and stretch. And back in those days, when the president got up, all the fans got up. And so the first game he went to, they got up with him, and that's how the seventh inning stretch started. I thought that was pretty cool. There he is. Nicknamed Slim. William Howard Taft. Forty-seven pitches, thirty strikes for Jeremy Hepner through three. He and Desmond fly to right, first time up. Taking a while to shake that one off. Kia Motors with pitch location. What he hits against pitches in certain spots. Discover Kia's full lineup of high quality, stylish, and dependable, vehicle, dependable vehicles. To learn more, Kia.com. If you average all those out, it looks like he's a 400 hitter. <laughs> yeah, a lot of those depend on the count. You get 02, you can throw it down there to 091. You fall behind, you've got to throw it into a 400 zone somewhere. He's impressed with the night he had last night. He was 0 for 3 going into his fourth at bat. All those clutch hits at the end, and that 0 for 3, he hit the ball hard every single time. He's having good at bats. And that looked like a ball to me. Wow, pretty generous from Wally Bell on a called third strike. Hefner's second of the night. We'll check it on the Kinetic pitch track. Kinetic North America. Everything away to Ian Desmond. And you see Josh Tolley pull that ball back. Every time a catcher pulls the ball a little bit, he's telling you he didn't think it was a strike, and neither did Ian Desmond. And we've talked about that a lot this year, Carp. The catcher just catches it if it's a strike. But if he's moving yeah. his glove, he's telling you, he's telling everybody, he didn't think it was a strike. So we need to make it look like a strike by a simple wrist turn or you know a subtle pull of the glove back into the strike zone. That's what totally did on the 3-2 pitch to Desmond. Danny Espinosa quite late for that one. And very subtle stuff. I mean it's not a big glove jerk. We see where he catches it. Now watch what he does. Yeah. Just a little bit right there to make it look like more of a strike. And then he holds it. And it worked. And he flied to left his first time. Well, you hope this isn't a repeat of Sunday where you get some home run stuff going early, get some runs early, and then everything goes quiet. The Nats have had one hit since the first. And that was Lombardozzi's two out single up the middle in the second. Espinosa with a pretty good rip. Now that's what they did Sunday against the Braves. Back to back home runs, two to nothing. You think you know, Tommy Hansen had three and a third innings his last out, and you're thinking they're gonna they're gonna crush this guy, but that was all they got. Tommy, what did he was he good after that? Yeah, not rattled at all by back to back home runs to start the game up and figured it out. Danny Espinosa with a really nice swing. Gonna pitch up a little bit, knew what to do with it. And Danny's aboard with one out with Flores coming up. Yeah, first time up, Danny Espinosa, nice smooth swing, hit a deep line drive down the left field line. Second time up, same thing. See how he's staying through the baseball right there? 
We talked about that the other day. Foots down early, bats in the strike zone a long time. And that's how you get a lot of contact. A lot of times we talk about his bat being in and out of the zone left-handed. That's a good swing right there. Kept it through the zone. Find the barrel more consistently from the left side. That's a nice swing. Jesus Flores goes up first pitch attack. And Lucas Duda under this one. Two outs now with a pitcher coming up. Series finale. It's a day game tomorrow at 105. Chin Ming Wong and R.A. Dickey. And then, of course, if the rotation is what we think it will be and should be, it'll be Strasburg, Gonzalez, and Zimmerman at Fenway Park for the weekend. Four o'clock game on Saturday. And a 1.30 with our friends from D.C. 50 joining us Sunday. Then on to Toronto. The Nats have not been to Fenway Park since 2006. Well, that series is going to have some kind of buzz with Strasburg and Gonzalez the first two games of that series. Wow. And the Red Sox have been better lately right now sitting three games behind Baltimore and Tampa Bay. In the AL East they lead the Orioles fifth inning at Fenway one nothing right now. Well the outside corner is available for sure for Jeremy Hefner. And I wonder if Edwin Jackson is making a note of this. As is Jesus Flores for when the Nats get back out on the field. at a 2 1 pitch and now the counts even with the bat this year he's 4 for 22 a 185 career hitter with a homer and seven RBIs and see all the off speed tonight from Hefner hmm. we talking to Edwin Jackson before the game today in the dugout and he's one of those pitchers that likes to talk to everybody the day he pitches. Some guys don't. Edwin does. I said, how many career home runs do you have? He said, one. I said, well, you're due then. <laughs> I said, I'm always bouncing around. American League, National League. I don't get that many at-bats during the course of a season. And he was trying right there in a two-strike count. I'll tell you that. That was a good rip. Danny Espinosa singled with one out. Still at first base, two down. And Jackson gets under that one, pops it right side. Ike Davis. That's it for the Nats in the fourth. They have stranded at a three and lead. Three two.
Right now it's beautiful at the ballpark. Nice view from out toward our Nets extra set up here in the booth where the guys really work hard. It's on to the top of the fifth inning. Interesting ball game. Big quick start for the Nats. Jackson looking fine. A few glitches and bumps in the road since then. When you get three runs in the first inning, the key as an offensive ball club is to add on. Yeah. If you can do that, you'll demoralize the team you're playing against. So quick three runs. The Mets answer with two of their own. So a good ball game right now. But if the Nats at the top of the order right now can tack on a few more, that's when you get in the head of the other team. They're thinking, yeah, these guys keep coming. It's going to be a tough one tonight. And really not many opportunities to do so since then. So Edwin's going to have to keep this a 3-2 game for a while. See if his guys can get it going. The Nationals will have the top of the lineup due up when the bottom of the fifth rolls around. Still not as many fastballs as he usually throws. And the velocity at times tonight has been in the low 90s. He's still got the 95 if he needs it with two strikes. The reach back fastball, but like we talked about in the first inning, he's trying to save the bullpen tonight. But as I see that, as I say that, I look down there and guys are starting to get loose. Nobody throwing yet, but everybody up, kind of moving around down there. Jim Lett walking around. 63 pitches so far for Edwin Jackson. Yeah, the fourth was his longest frame with 24. Omar Quintanilla, that damaging leadoff walk in the third that eventually got the Mets their first run and got their offense on the move a little bit. So that's a good out to get middle of the game with the pitcher coming up. Beautiful night in D.C. Hefner coming up, sacrificed his first time. As I mentioned earlier, the Mets drafted him twice. Out of Perkins Tryon High School in Oklahoma. He didn't sign either time because one time was the 46th round, the other time was the 48th. So he went to a fine junior college called Seminole State that's produced a bunch of major leaguers. Then he played one year for Rob Walton at Oral Roberts University. And that's produced a couple of major leaguers. Tom Nieto comes to mind. Mike Moore, longtime pitcher for the Oakland Athletics, came out of there. And here he is in the big leagues facing Edwin Jackson. One ball, one strike. Front door. Nice slider away. And at least so far doing what you hope to do against the bottom of the order. Two quick outs. Yeah, go right after him. A couple of good sliders right there from Edwin Jackson. You see the rotation. Not so much the dot we showed on the Gorzolani slider last night. But good break nonetheless. Did the job. Thanks for coming. Some interesting numbers about Jackson. Not a big difference between what he and the rest of the staff do. But the end result is strange. Because he's one in three, the Nats are two and eight in his starts, but his ERA isn't much higher than the rest of the starters, and his opponent's batting average is actually lower. That ball is hit hard to right. Michael Morris grabs it. Tricky line drive, and it'll be Lombardosi, Harper, and Zimmerman. Bottom of the fifth rolling around, Nats by a run.
bottom of the fifth inning. So the Nats, after a walk-off win last night, trying to get back on top tonight. And here's an AT&T fact of the game. First teenager to deliver a first career walk-off since Gary Sheffield back in September of 88. And I'm pretty sure Gary Sheffield started his career with Milwaukee as a shortstop, right? He did. So going back a ways for the teenagers to deliver. Well, they say nothing good ever happens after 11.20 at night. <laughs> and it was right at that stroke when Bryce put an end to things here last evening. And I said something last night about I felt sorry for the fans that couldn't stay for the whole game. And realized the Metro closes at midnight. And they should keep that thing open for fans so they can stay for extra inning baseball games. I'm sure there was a lot of Nats fans last night that wanted to stay and watch Bryce Harper get his first walk-off hit. But they had to leave because the Metro was closing. I'll just buy a big bus and take everybody home so everybody can stay for the extra inning games. Okay. Well, I know in the past there have been times when Metro has held trains late, but evidently, according to the scoreboard last night, they didn't do it. Well, everybody's scrambling to catch that last train out. And like I say, you just never know what's going to happen with this ball club, but then with Bryce Harper, he does something different every night. Lombardozzi, one for two. And that ball right to Neuenheis in left field. Discover Kia's full lineup of high quality, stylish, and dependable vehicles. To learn more, visit Kia.com. Facing the same pitcher in a ball game. So, check, check, check. Yeah. How many guys are around for four at bats anymore? That's an interesting stat in this day and age of pitch counts and starters going six, maybe seven. Now, what they didn't have up there was his seventh time up. He's hitting a thousand. <laughs> and that one handled by Quintanilla, two outs as Bryce went first pitch hunting. Here's his seventh time up last night. Let's check it out. So you saw one, two, three, four, but how about his seventh time up? One for one, walk off single, batting a thousand. Good effort by Rotino in left field right there. He tried to sell the call, but that ball short hopped into his glove. Very obvious. And then it was just an episode of baseball friends down there at first base. Everybody going crazy. Another walk-off win for the Nats. They're sixth of the year. Somebody trying to spray him. Zimmerman, Mr. Walk-off himself, was the first one to greet him. And as I mentioned earlier, Ryan was in the on-deck circle. So Ryan tonight, a walk, a run, and a ground out on a hot shot to short. Front door breaking ball for a strike quickly 0 2. Ryan Zimmerman's having one of those years when it seems like every pitcher in the league gets him 0 2. Breaking balls, fastballs. It'll turn around, we know it will. Jammed with a fastball, and maybe that will help. Didn't hit that ball nearly as hard as the last time, but he loves the result. And the Nats have their fifth base hit. And the way I see it, he's got about 25 more of those coming. He leads the team in hard hit balls for outs this year. They say they all equal out. I don't think they do, but Ryan Zimmer will definitely take that one in a two strike count. A good effort by Murphy. But a knock for Ryan. And the way I look at it, he's going to have a monster second half. Now that shoulder is going to get back to 100%. He's not going to say anything about it, but I don't think it's 100%. And when you're a guy that hits right around 300 every single year, you got to figure when your average is at where it's at right now, you're going to go home a lot of nights the second half of the season, sleep very easy with two and three hits. Ooh. Adam LaRoche, one for two with a three-run homer. 2 quickly. And it's just like I always say, you know, whatever you shoot on the front, you're always going to get to your handicap. And when you have a track record like Ryan Zimmerman, doesn't matter what you shoot on the front, you're going to get to your handicap on the back. Guys that always hit right around the same amount, they'll get there. 
Sometimes you just do it different ways. Sometimes you have a monster first half and you slow down a little bit in the second half. Sometimes you have a slower first half and then tons of hits coming in the second half. And maybe that's what's Ryan saying to Ike Davis right now. You yeah. got a lot of hits coming in the second half, Ike. <laughs> and a one, two. And Roche thought it was close enough to which to be hacking. We want to welcome uh, Kyle Brostowitz back to the Nats. On Sunday, he joined uh, John Dever and uh, Mike Gazda on the Nats media relations staff. Kyle interned here a couple of years ago, worked for the Braves last year. He's full time here now. I'd like to welcome him back to the Nats and a great addition, replacing Bill Glovna, who recently took another opportunity. Adam LaRoche up the middle with a base hit. Zimmerman stops at second. So the middle of the order collecting some hits tonight. Zimmerman, LaRoche, and Morse have four hits between them, and they've been on base five times. A nice piece of hitting right there from Adam LaRoche. That was fun to watch David Wright in the shift scramble back to third base. Ryan Zimmerman's thinking, I might be able to beat, there he goes, right there, playing up the middle. And Zimmerman's thinking, I might be able to beat David Wright to third, but Wright hustled back all the way, just turned his back in a full sprint, found third base, and turned around to find the throw. Yeah, they're both gold glovers. They both knew what was going on there. David Wright's thinking, you know, I've played third base my whole life, and I've never had to run that far to get back to third base to cover it on a base hit. First time the Nats have had a runner in scoring position since... Bryce Harper was at second base on the LaRoche home run. There's right right there, just kind of scrambling back to the base. And Quintanilla saying, don't worry, Andre, so get there. And that was a full sprint, turned around, the ball was right there. On every play, everybody has a place to be. Especially when you have a shift, then you don't know where the heck to be. Bottom of the fifth. The Nats haven't scored since the first. And this would be a big time of the ball game to break through. Edwin Jackson is facing two, three, and four for the Mets a half inning from now. Michaels one for two, base hit to right, double play ball to short. And the 0-2 pitch well outside. And if you remember last year, early in the season, the book on Michael Morse was pound him in. And it seems like early this year, everybody's trying him away because of the resume. 30 home runs last year, 30 plus home runs, 300 average. So maybe guy's a little afraid to try the big guy inside, but they're going in there right now. That is scorched off of Ike Davis. Here comes Zimmerman. The Nats tack on a big run. And now we can welcome Michael Morse to the RBI column. What we were just talking about. Add on to that three runs you scored in the first inning. That's a clutch two out RBI right there for Michael Morse. The ball was supposed to be down and in. Hefner with a location mistake left it right down the middle, and that hop almost took Ooh. off Ike Davis's head right there. That ball was some kind of smoke by Michael Morse. Now the Mets bullpen is stirring. So Michael Morse is two for three tonight. He is four for his last six with a walk. And we had that stat from last year. Four runs or more, the Nats were 54 and 24, 30 games over 500. And just by having Michael Morse back in the lineup, you would think that the average run per game automatically goes up. I mean, the lineup's a lot deeper. Now you got Ian Desmond hitting six. You got a presence in the lineup to where guys just can't feed the ball down the middle. They always know where Michael Morse is. It's nice to see. Desmond is short. That force will end the fifth inning. Well, last night the Nets rallied, and tonight they've got the lead.
brought to you by your Washington, D.C. BMW centers. And by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. The Masson fishing vessel is anchored tonight. It's scuffling, too. Enjoying yeah. a beautiful evening, though, on the Anacostia. The yacht is out enjoying some deep-sea <laughs> fishing somewhere. Top of the sixth. And the Mets box score has an RBI from Neuenheis in the third. And a ground ball by Lucas Duda after a pitcher's throwing error in the fourth. That's it for the Mets offense. And this is the big inning right here for Edwin Jackson. Third time through the lineup. Neuenheis lined out hard to right field to end the fifth. But Torres, Wright, and Duda. This inning should tell the story for Edwin Jackson tonight. Most runs the Nats have scored for him over his last nearly three weeks. That's impressive. Third time through, 175 average against. You'd never believe he's one and three with six no decisions if you looked at those. There's a big out. Danny Espinosa throws out Andres Torres. Bringing in David Wright the way you like to face him. Bases empty. Look at that. 101 of his 107 starts. This is his 184th career start tonight. Trying to get that record, that career record, back within a game of 500. He's 61 and 63. And this is where the RBI by Michael Morse becomes so big because you can go right after David Wright. 1-1 one, one game, not so much. Two-run game, go right after him. So you throw first pitch fastball. Looked like a pretty good pitch. Didn't get the call at the knees. And I think when you see a guy not even offer it a pitch like that, this is what FP would call seen it big. I see, mean, not even tempted. Seen it big and sitting on a fastball in a 1 0 count. Just don't want to get too cute right here and put him on for Lucas Duda in a two run game. Good jamage right there. And 92 miles an hour, two seam fastball boring down and in. You see where all the pitches are down. It's a good sign. You get tired, the pitches start getting up in the zone. Edwin Jackson not tired. He's keeping the ball down. Ty Wigginton has just hit his sixth homer of the year. Bottom of the fifth at Philadelphia. They've tied the Dodgers 2-2. Lucas Duda next, the cleanup man for the Mets. And the Braves still lead 2-1 at Miami. Top of the sixth. In the air to right, and Michael Morris is under it. We are just beyond twilight time here, so no problem seeing the ball. You can buy Nationals game used, autographed, and team issued memorabilia. Available at every home game. Check out sections 112 and 113 for more info. Email memorabilia at nationals.com. Lucas Duda has flied to left, grounded to short, and that was that slow roller on which. David Wright scored two innings ago. Great changeup. He thought it was a first pitch fastball. Changing speeds, mixing things up very well. Since that base hit by David Wright, eight of the last nine retired, with only the Ike Davis walk in the fourth getting in the way. Jesus Flores blocks every ball like the bases are loaded. In the bottom of the ninth of game seven of the World Series. And 
We've touched on it a few times this year. Home plate umpires appreciate that. Maybe later in the game or later in a series, you get some borderline calls because you're protecting the guy behind the plate. Did he go? No swing, says Mark Wegner. 3 2 count now. And the home plate umpire realizes it, but there's three guys in the field watching it too. And they're thinking, I can't wait to get behind the plate with this guy catching because he's going to block everything, even with guys, nobody on base. Wow. Right near the knees, if not at the knees. And for the second time this inning, he doesn't get that call. So Wally Bell does not have a low zone tonight. I'm going to check it out. Pitch track everything down from Jackson. A pretty good pitch right there. Good frame by Flores. Just a little low. Fourth walk of the game for Edwin. And it'll be Daniel Murphy now. Murphy 0 for 2, bouncing ball to second, ground ball to short. That's some good paint on the outside corner. See, to me, that was the same height as the 3 2 pitch to Duda. Good location, caught the outside corner of the plate, but it looked like the same height. That is just outside the bag. So some fastballs away. We got the good fastball going all of a sudden. 95, 96 miles an hour. And you think that Murphy might be open for that slider down and in. And maybe use a pitch to set it up because you're ahead 0-2. But if you're in a hurry and you want to get the punch out, maybe you go to that slider down and in right here if you're Edwin Jackson. He's bounced a couple of breaking balls to get strikeouts tonight. You see that right there? He stepped off and looked at the runner. And that tells me that he doesn't feel comfortable throwing the ball to first base. Oh, four shakes to a fastball away. A curveball slider, fastball in, fastball away. Make it a good one. He's going to get the call on the corner. How about real good? Interesting strike zone at times tonight, and the Mets aren't happy about it.
Mason. Who but W.B. Mason. So this one into the bottom of the sixth inning. Bottom three for the Nets. Bullpen is quiet, indicating that Jackson will hit and keep on pitching. And when you are out of our immediate area here, subscribe to MLB.tv. You can take us with you. Live online on your favorite devices in HD quality. Visit nationals.com to order. And to get more details on MLB.tv, it's baseball everywhere. Danny Espinosa, one for two. Danny saw that called third strike to Daniel Murphy. Oh, Danny, great. I'm the leadoff guy. And that called first strike to him, and he's thinking, I need a longer bat. 38 inch bat instead of my 34 inch bat because yeah. that call to Murphy was some kind of break for the Nats and Edwin Jackson. That was way outside. Yeah, Wally Bell handed the Nats one there. And as a defender, you know it. You're sitting there looking in, you're watching the strike zone all night long. So you know on defense if the a guy's wide away or maybe he's high on a given night you know what you have to protect before you get up there based on what you're seeing looking in from where you're standing on defense. That's why it's so much fun to play center field. You got the best view of the strike zone of anybody. You're looking right in there and by the time you get up there you got that shot right there. That's like standing center field so you know the zone. That was pretty much. Headed down the middle, tailed a little bit to the outer half. Kinetic North America pitch track, third strikeout for Hefner. And I thought that one was better than the call third to Daniel Murphy. Let's check it out. Good pitch right on the black. And if you know he's wide away, you have to protect away. Easy for me to say, not easy to do. That'll bring in Jesus Flores, who's 0 for 2 tonight. Could be Hefner's last inning. You saw their only left-hander, Tim Burdak, warming up. He's due to bat fourth in the top of the seventh. On a slider and a bouncer. Two hops to Quintanilla. He just gooses it over there with the catcher running. Two outs. And here comes Edwin Jackson. Damage from the middle of the batting order tonight. So Zimmerman has a hit and a walk. LaRoche has two hits, including the homer. Michael Morris has gone opposite field a couple of times. And I know the subject of conversation around the offense lately has been the non-production by the middle of the lineup. That is not the case tonight. Look out, Bo Porter. Edwin Jackson does not get cheated. And Bo Porter just found that out firsthand. He's thinking one thing right now. Home run number two. Swing hard in case they hit it. Absolutely. So they give him a change up. That way you can swing hard and not get it. Well, you can scare a guy away from a fastball with that first half. <laughs> so he's going fastball, change up, slider here. Mets looking for arms. Picked up this guy on waivers last December. From San Diego. Actually, the Pirates grabbed him from the Padres. Didn't have him long. And then about three weeks later, the Mets got it. 0-2 pitch. Jackson with a defensive swing. And a ball that rolls to Daniel Murphy. He fields that one cleanly, and the sixth inning is over.
The Morris is starting to come alive. Two for three opposite field RBI. Adam LaRoche, the big blast in the first inning. There are your four runs batted in, hopefully enough for Edwin Jackson. As he goes to the seventh inning right here, we're going to show the strikeouts. But talking to Edwin Jackson before the game today, he wanted to pitch to contact. So this is the reason guys try to strike everybody out. Every time we show a package, it's of strikeouts. How about a first pitch ground ball to shortstop? How about just a routine pop-up to center field? And maybe guys will start buying in to pitch into contact. But all the highlights is Edwin Jackson looks in right there and says, Whoa, I got away with one right there for strike three. And maybe... Show some first pitch outs. The next highlight package. What do you think? I like it. Yeah. We'll make that cool. Well, you sound like a guy who wants to see mid-range jumpers in basketball <laughs> instead of dunks. <laughs> I want to see guys using the backboard. Yeah. See a hook shot. A good bounce pass. Well, any way to get people out in this game. I feel like Edwin Jackson, even though he's at 86 pitches right now, in his mind, he's smelling the finish line. He knows how to do it. And it would be huge right now to get to that finish line and save the bullpen for tomorrow. If you can win this game and take the first two of a big series and have the bullpen just have a night off, you are set up for a sweep, folks. But first things first, long way to go in this baseball game. Yeah. And then on top of that, just to take it one step farther, six games coming up in American League ballparks. You don't want a battered bullpen heading for Boston and Toronto. Those are good hitting teams. Yeah, that's the part. Both those teams rake. Ike Davis, Josh Tolley, Omar Quintanilla for the Mets in the top of the seventh. Countdown is on. That's my boy. In just nine days in theaters, June 15th, Adam Sandler, Andy Samberg. Well hit left center. That will plug the gap. Lombardozzi gets to it. Lead off double like Davis. That breaks an 0 for 12 for him after he walked two times tonight. And maybe that's why Edwin Jackson threw him a 3-2 slider last time up and lost him to a walk. He knew that he's a good fastball hitter. Ike Davis with a great swing the other way. No stride, a little extension right there. Finds himself with a leadoff double. Nice swing. That might get the phone ringing in the Nats bullpen. We'll see. Bullpen coach standing next to the phone. Jim Lett waiting. He's got his all, his, all of his friends back tonight. He had no friends down there last night. They were all used up. Yeah, even his bullpen catchers deserted him there in the late stages. Tons of buddies ready to rock tonight for Jim Lett. Jackson tends to slow down considerably with men on base. Hot shot. Espinoza for a second thought about third. That's a long throw. Pretty much right over the shoulder of a runner. Up by two. Take the out. And you can ignite your natitude with a five-game flex plan. Pick four games. Get a fifth one free. Some restrictions do apply. You can log on to nationals.com slash flex and check out some of the plans starting at just $60. Do the math. It's a great way to see five games. And we talk about good defense all the time. And good defense isn't always just making the play. Good defense is making the play and making the right decision. We've seen that two or three times tonight with Nats infielders. Ian Desmond was thinking about getting David right at the plate, but because he had a lead right there, a two-run lead, he decided to go to first base. Danny Espinosa right here because he has a two-run lead. And he's got a shot because of the humpback line drive right there. Mike Davis had to freeze. He did have a shot at third, but if you don't get the play, that's a rally igniter. 
I think Adam LaRoche, too, had a chance to get the lead out and said, you know what, I'm just going to go to first base. So it's not always just making the play. It's making the right decision. I mean, that's infielders do that almost every single time. Well, that's how you make yourself top three in the league in team defense. Only the Phillies and the Reds have made fewer errors than the Nats. Quintanilla has walked and grounded out and now grounded out again. It looks like a 1-4-3. Jackson got a little piece of it. And now it's a 4-3 game. We talked about the Mets last night doing little things on offense, and that's good baseball right there. Mike Davis with a leadoff double. Josh Tolley moving him over, and Omar Quintanilla taking what the defense gives you. A little ground ball to second base. RBI making this a one-run game. It's good baseball. Jordani Valdespin will pinch it for the Mets here. When he did this last night, he had a home run. Later, he doubled. Then he gave, gave both of those runs back with errors at shortstop. So he will bat for Hefner, who goes six innings and gives the Nats four runs, three earned on seven hits. Struck out three. Walked one. By the modern definition, a quality start. Victimized by his defense in the first, but he also walked a batter in front of the home run. There's so many starts throughout a season, 30 plus starts, so many games throughout a season. To me, a quality start is if you keep your team in the baseball game and give them a chance to win. It's that simple. Well, he did that. You take all the numbers out of it. When you leave the baseball game as a starting pitcher, if your team has a chance to win, whether you're ahead or behind, you did your job. So there's going to be nights when you go out there and give up, you know, five, six, seven, eight runs. So you keep your team in the ball game. You did a great job. I think Hefner did that tonight. Gave up the three-run home run and did a nice job after that. He goes off speed, tried to steal a strike down around the knees. Edwin now trying to go at least seven in four of his last six starts. So this will be, as FP mentioned earlier, just the second time this year he goes 100. 105 at San Diego last month. Swing and a miss. And he will get the Nats with strikeout number six to the seventh inning stretch with the lead. 4-3, Washington. And it's been no surprise to most what Bryce Harper has been able to do at the plate and in the field. But national manager Mike Rizzo did sit down and tell me what has exceeded his expectations when it comes to the kid. We've all seen the ball jump off the bat, the bat speed, the throwing arm, the running. and uh, But the way he's conducted himself and, and really the way he's he's kept himself under control in pressure situations is is kind of uh, uh, was kind of enlightening and, and uh, it was something about him that uh, that we we really uh, were thinking about and seeing if it was going to happen and uh, he's really he's really uh, uh, come a long way in a, in a very short time 
There were a lot of questions in the clubhouse last night for Harper's teammates as to whether or not they're surprised by anything the kid's done. The consensus, absolutely not, other than when it hits him that he's only 19. They don't look at him as a teenager, obviously. Ryan Zimmerman pointed out he doesn't get caught up in the moment for how young he is. He does a really good job at that. Well, he's a teammate and performing at the highest level here. And, you know, they talked about him fitting in in spring training. He's taking it right to the regular season. And we could talk about Bryce Harper and give him credit, but I think a lot of credit has to go to the Nats clubhouse. There's a lot of clubhouses that wouldn't accept a 19-year-old like this. And when you talk about the makeup of that clubhouse and those guys just taking him in and accepting him. And as a 19-year-old, you look around and you find guys that you want to emulate. There's always somebody that breaks you in when you're a rookie. And you find that guy, and he's been hanging around Ian Desmond a lot. I think that's a great guy for him to latch on to. But, you know, you talk about them accepting him. I think you've got to give a lot of credit to the Nats clubhouse. All the guys on this team and the makeup of that team. This call to the bullpen packaged by the UPS store. We love logistics. Tim Burdak gets the call. Like everybody else pitching the game last night. But he only faced one hitter. That was in the eighth last night. Actually got one out and gave up a hit to Ryan Zimmerman, who eventually scored. And Zimmerman, who is one of the best, pardon me, Lombardosi, one of the best bunters, just unable to drop it down that third baseline. Great idea. That would have been fun. But that's the way you do it. It's called fair foul. And if you're going to lay down a base hit bunt, you want to be either perfect or foul so you're still hitting. And if you miss a bunt toward the pitcher, it's an at-bat and you're out. But if you try to bunt it perfect down the line for a base hit, if it rolls foul, you're still hitting. And if it stays fair, you got yourself a knock. That's what you do early in the count. Well, you mentioned this with Espinosa. Lombardozzi, that kind of guy too. One or two of those a week would be really nice. Breaking ball stays outside, 1-1. This is interesting. Lombardozzi, not that many at bats right handed. Just 19. Two hits from that side, one of them a double, one RBI. It's such a fine line as a switch hitter, too. Because if you're just facing righties and you're platooning, kind of, there's a tendency to let your right handed swing maybe slack off a little bit because you're not using it. And as soon as you do that, guess what happens? The righty you're facing lasts one inning. And you get four at-bats against the lefty out of the bullpen right-handed. So you got to keep both swings fresh. And Lombardozzi works as hard as anybody doing just that. You watch him during batting practice. It's not all left-handed. And I've seen some switch hitters do that to where, hey, I'm just playing against righties. I'm going to go up there and just take all my swings left-handed. Who cares about my right-handed swing? And as soon as you do that, guess what? You find yourself hitting right-handed a lot, even though you're starting as a left-handed hitter. That's a check swing and a foul. Phillies got three in the fifth. Jimmy Rollins is at a home run. Now they lead the Dodgers in the sixth, 4 2 up at Citizens Bank Park. And the Braves are batting in the eighth, still leading 2 1 at Miami. Inside, three and two. I want to send out our best wishes to Tommy Lasorda, too. Mm. Make sure he's doing okay. It sounds like he's fine. Going to be back in Los Angeles rooting for the team. Had a great quote the other night. He said, the doctors confirmed it. I do bleed Dodger blue. <laughs> Big walk, maybe. We'll see. With Harper and Zimmerman coming up. Tonight's copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Possibly the last hitter for Burdak as he goes lefty lefty with Harper Zimmerman on deck. Would the Nats be inclined to do some running here? Lombardozzi, not that much yet. We know he can move it, but he's 0 for 1 stealing. And Harper trying to dump one into left field. 
placed perfectly. Lombardozzi at second base. And now the Nats have a chance for a rally. A little smile from Bryce Harper right there. He's hit the ball hard three times tonight. He comes up his fourth time and goes lob wedge to left field. A little 56 degree lob wedge right here and he gets his first hit of the night and he'll take it. They all don't equal out. But you just don't throw those back. <laughs> Somebody told him in the dugout he was going to get a knock and he didn't care what it looked like. So that's in business right here trying to add on first and second nobody out bottom of the seven big spot for Ryan Zimmerman. A walk a single one for two two runs scored tonight. This is a breathing room at bat right here. And Burdak gets the call near the outside corner from Wally Bell. And just seeing Bryce do that back to the dugout kind of expanded on my point a little bit. When you have a clubhouse that takes you in, you can be yourself. And when you're yourself, that's when you perform the best at the major league level. If you have to tiptoe around because you got grumpy veterans in there, then all of a sudden you're not quite being yourself and you're worried about what you say and how you say it and what you do and how you do it. But for Bryce Harper right now, he's just being himself. And that's a credit to his teammates. Target away. Zimmerman waits for the breaking ball. Cracks it hard to right. Foul into the corner. But I think you made a great point a couple of at bats ago. Ryan Zimmerman's swing, he's getting after it now. He's throwing that head in the strike zone. And we watched for about three weeks straight where the league was pitching everything away to him, staying on the outer half. And maybe because of that shoulder, and trust me, folks, he won't tell anybody. He's not that kind of guy that's ever going to use anything for an excuse. Maybe you just can't get to that outside pitch, but I've watched him the last couple of days. He told me he found something. And right now he's throwing that barrel in the strike zone with a little bit more authority than he has the last two or three weeks. It's good to see. Protection count here. He gets jammed and pops it up down the line. That ball is going to be fair and caught. And look at the tag by Lombardozzi. He's into third base. Great read. Baseball players make heads up plays. And when I say baseball player, you know what I mean. Steve Lombardozzi is a baseball player. He knows that ball is going to go foul. So what does he do? He tags up and he tests like Davis and he advances to third with one out. That's heads up baseball, folks. That's how you win baseball games, doing the little things like that. He could have went halfway right there and just went back to second base, and nobody would have said a word, but the fact that he realized Davis was going to run that down going away from the play, even though Ike Davis has a strong arm, it's a heads-up play. I think they're going to appeal second base right here, or else they have the weirdest shift on that I've ever seen in my whole life. Yeah, they're appealing because Murphy's going to back up the throw to Quintanilla. Whoa. No, they're not. Whoa. How about that? Second baseman in center field, shortstop on the bag, and David Wright running from third to his left. What yeah. is going on here? David Wright was standing on the base. Daniel Murphy was 10 steps on the outfield grass right behind the base, and Quintanilla stand on the base, like you said. And it was a one pitch shift. Adam LaRoche high in the air to center. That'll be deep enough to make it five to three. And Adam LaRoche has driven in four tonight. His biggest RBI game in quite a while. And Adam now has 39 RBIs. And give Lombardozzi half an RBI in that one for being heads up, getting into scoring position. And give Trent Jewett a little bit of credit on the back end right there. Bryce Harper went to tag up. He told him to go halfway. If he tags up right there and gets thrown out at second base, Andres Torres has a big arm in center field. That run doesn't count. So heads up play all over the place on the bases right now for the Nats. Nice job. Burdak is done. 
This call to the bullpen brought to you by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Brought to you by Dodge. Go to Dodge.com or visit your local Dodge dealer tomorrow. Anytime this week. You'll enjoy some beautiful weather and great values. And we go to another Mets pitcher. Miguel Batista came in last night to follow up Chris Young. He pitched two innings of scoreless baseball with a walk and two strikeouts last night. To give the Mets a chance to eventually win, which they could not hold on to do. He'll face Michael Morse here with Harper at first, and maybe the Nats do some running here with two outs. Bryce is two for four in the stolen base department. A small lead right now. The ball bounces. Blocked by Tolley. I think they might just let the beast eat right here. Well, leadoff walk costly to the Mets here. A bigger lead for Harper. Late breaker. Yeah, Batista, four pitch guy. Fastball, cutter, curveball, change. Might have been a cutter right there at 86 miles an hour. Morris, two for three tonight at RBI. Both hits opposite field. Counts in his favor now, two and one. He's looking for up something up in the zone that he can drive in a 2 1 count. Everything but from Miguel Batista starts about knee high. If it starts there, it's going to go down. You're looking for something belt high that you can drive. All four of his pitches, if they start low, they're going to be out of the zone. And Michael saw something on the inner half. And the foul tip right over the top of it, two and two. And this might be a count where Bryce Harper, if he gets a good jump, could go. It's probably an off speed count, give him an extra step. He's going. 
And Morris will pull a foul. And check out Michael Morris's two hits tonight. Head down going the other way. That ball was smoked. Then how about this one right here? I don't think you can hit a ball any harder on the ground. I think Davis might have flashbacks of that one tonight in his hotel room. Yeah, hard hit, nasty hop. By the way, when Zimmerman, LaRoche, and Morse got those hits in the fifth, every one of them was 0-2 in the count before those base hits. Huge lead for Harper. There he goes. Here he comes. I think as Bryce gets more experience on the base pass, he'll learn that you get the same lead every time. Good base dealers look like they're going every single pitch. They get the same exact lead every single time because if you get a bigger lead one time than the other, you're telling the other team, I'm going. But if you get the same lead, whether it's big or small, every single time, they can't figure out when you're going. And you got a better chance to steal the base. They won't throw over. They won't pitch out. He's shortened up right here. R.A. Dickey, who the Nats have beaten four out of six times in his career, but he's eight and one this year against Chin Ming Wong tomorrow. 12:30 Nats extra. We join you at one. First pitch at 105. Getaway day. Huge lead. There he goes. Low and away, and Harper rips that one easily. And now as a big league base dealer, he's three out of five. That's with their 29th of the year. Not the best jump in the world, but he outran it. You see him looking back right there. Miguel Batista very deliberate to the plate, very slow to the plate. And that bag was stolen off Batista, not Tolly. Michael Morris, another runner in scoring position. The middle of the lineup has all five RBIs tonight. Adam LaRoche, four of them. Morris will take what the game gives him, and that's a two out walk. Getting Ian Desmond to the plate. I mean, Michael Morris going to right field a couple of times tonight, walking tonight. He's back, folks. There's no doubt about it. Last thing to come is a strike zone. It only took him a couple of games. The right field stroke is there, the strike zone is there. He's good. Good to go. The beast is back. Mark it down. Ian Desmond 0 for 3. Last night was his night. Of course, he was 0 for 3 last night before he exploded. That was great stuff showing Ian Desmond talking to Davey Johnson on the top step of the dugout. Ian Desmond talking about how he got his hands underneath the ball and he wanted to go straight down to the ball and Davy Johnson was reinforcing it back to Desmond with a little love tap and a punch right in his chest. Showing him that if you're going to punch somebody that's how you do it not underhand like this but getting on top. It's great TV as I'm demonstrating it to you up here in the booth. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> that fan saw it at home. I know they did. Yeah you've got a long wingspan. Sean Burnett and uh, believe it or not Edwin Jackson is still the only Nets who's thrown a pitch tonight. Seems like he's been off the mound for a half hour. Probably because he has. That's ball two and the Nets are grinding out some good at bats here in the seventh inning. Well this should be. Quite a swing for me and Desmond if he gets a strike. He will not get cheated in a 2 1 count right here. Eight home runs, 26 RBIs on the year. And that's too far inside, ball three. There is no activity in the Mets' bullpen. They're a little worn out after last night because they were a couple of guys short because of John Rausch's elbow. He's back in New York. 
One swing right here puts this one on ice. And Ian Desmond takes a foul ball off his lower body for the second time tonight. Check it out. See where it got him. This was squared up, too. Right on the instep. And that does not feel good. That takes a minute to get the feeling back there. And usually, you get a fastball down and in right off that pitch. Same pitch, same spot. He doesn't miss much time. 154 games last year. 584 at bats. 154 the year before that with 525. Start him up. 3 2 runners on the move. Just got a piece of it. He's still working slowly. Desmond, ground ball up the middle. How did he place it? Well played by the shortstop, Quintanilla. Saving a bases loaded situation and maybe a runner scoring on that play. The 100 pitches, 60 for strikes. Save the bullpen on a night when it needed to be saved. It's time for Toyota K's for Kids, and let's check out the stuff from Edwin Jackson tonight. The fastball was good. The slider was sharp. There's a slider again right there, so he had all the pitches working. And his command was good, and he got a couple of breaks on some pitches that were borderline, but the slider down into lefties was a kill pitch all night long. The Washington area Toyota dealers want to help children receiving medical treatment at National Institutes of Health and their families. So they're making a donation to the Children's Inn at NIH of $37 for every strikeout by a Nationals pitcher this season. Sean Burnett for the eighth. As Edwin Jackson went seven, just three hits, two earned runs, three runs total. Four walks, six strikeouts, and Burnett has been outstanding Money. this year. First pitch fastball to the corner to Neuenheis. The yeah, fastball's been good. The slider's been really good. And so is a changeup. All three pitches for strikes whenever he needs them. Just pounding the strike zone. Confidence is high.
It's Scott Hairston for Neuenheis here. He's been kind of their effective late game guy. He's hit home runs in two consecutive games. And for the fifth time in his last seven games last night. Yeah, he was busy last evening. Eighth inning walk scored a run. Tenth inning single a steal scored a run. Twelfth inning home run. But the Nats countered with two in the bottom. And here's a one two from Burnett. Swing and a miss on a good tailing fastball. Seventh strikeout by Nats pitching tonight. As it's a fastball on the outer half. We talked about it with Harrison last night. Deadpool hitter likes the ball close to him. Good pitch from Burnett. You see the sequence right there on the Jose Cuervo Exmo. Just a two seam fastball away and everything to Harrison in that at bat away, and he had no shot. Andres Torres, Steve Caddy said today, and he he has said this on a number of occasions. When it gets late in the ball game, if you're going to beat one of my guys, I want you to have to beat me away. And then as a bonus, he got the strikeout right there. It drives Cat crazy when a pitcher gives a hitter like the Nets did with Hairston last night something he can pull late in the game. Especially when he represents the tying run or the go ahead run. All good closers, all good late any relief guys. Make it beat him the other way to the big part of the ballpark. Very rarely do you see a good closer challenge the inner half of the plate when the guy has power and he represents either the tying run or the go ahead run. Every once in a while you do it for effect, move his feet just to get him off your outside stuff. But all the good closers in history live on the outer half of the plate. Bouncer, one hop, Zimmerman. Adam LaRoche waits for a belt high throw, two outs. For starting lineups, in game updates, and Nets team coverage you can't afford to miss, sign up for Mass and Mobile Alerts by texting Nationals to 29292. Now, I'm not that phone savvy, but I do have those alerts, and they're kind of interesting to see the things that come across during the game. And the text messages that I send you throughout the course of the day. Those are always entertaining, right? Yeah, I'm looking at one from today <laughs> that I'm still trying to figure out. <laughs> That ball is driven to right by right and right in the right spot <laughs> is Michael Morse. It feels so right as we go bottom eight. The Nats on top still by a couple. Out in the left field bleachers. He's not due up for about five hitters, so he's just kicking it in left field. Just like we promised earlier in the game, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. And how about the night Adam LaRoche is having? A home run his first time up, a three run job, and then he comes up last time up in the seventh inning. Little sack fly to center field. And that's for Steve Lombardozzi with a hustle heads up play to get into scoring position. LaRoche goes down in the dugout, and I guarantee you he's looking. 
for Lombardozzi to give him some love for getting to third base right there <laughs> and getting him an RBI. It's good stuff, guys. Bottom eight, Danny Espinosa, Jesus Flores, Scott Harrison replacing Newen Heiss in left field. That's a two hopper up the middle. Murphy gets there. First out. Don't forget about the Potomac Nationals. They face the Salem Red Sox. How about the Nats and the Red Sox on a couple levels this weekend? Friday and Saturday double headers. Fireworks to follow. Saturday's 535 game. Sunday a family fun day with family catch in the outfield after the 105 game. 703 590 2311 for more info. PotomacNationals.com. I love that family catch day. Do you throw the kids to each other? No. Come on. Is that that old line from Field of Dreams? Hey, Dad. Oh. Want to have a catch? You play catch in the outfield. That's right. You threw the kids back and forth from Mom and Dad. And a base hit for Jesus Flores. He wasn't going to go an entire game without a hit, was he? He's now hit safely. In 12 of his last 13 games. That'll set things up for the pinch hitter, Roger Bernadina. And what a job Bernadina's done off the bench for Davey Johnson. It seems like every time he comes up there in a big situation, in a pinch hit situation, he comes through, whether it's a walk, whether it's a hard hit baseball, whether it's a sacrifice bunt. Very valuable member of this ball club off the bench. Turn it into an A plus goon squad member. Batista with a long look and Bernardina taking a fastball up. Three of eight with an RBI as a pinch hitter. Tyler Clippard for the save. At least for now, the Nats are up by two. They could go beyond that. Two and oh. The only bad thing about what Roger Bernardina is doing off the bench is guess what? You come back to the dugout and guys say, that's what you are now, a pinch hitter. Yeah. Because you're doing it so well. A lot of times managers don't want to start guys like that because now they become so valuable, a valuable piece off the bench. So Roger continues to build a pretty nice career resume as a pinch hitter. Look at that. That'll keep you in baseball a long, long time, those kind of numbers. Well, and plus, as opposed to most guys, he can really run. And you can bring him into a game to pinch hit and keep him in for defense. Not a lot of great pinch hitters have those traits. That's a good point right there. And I'm sure if you ask Roger Bernardino privately, he doesn't want to be a bench guy. But if you're a valuable piece to a ball club that's in first place coming off the bench, Get some big hits of the month of September, maybe some bigger ones in the month of October if you're lucky. Two and two. And a good take by Roger. Would Davey Johnson do something with a runner here, even though it's a catcher with one out? Lombardozzi on deck, trying to maybe push the issue here a little bit in a third run. If you're betting on Roger putting the ball in play, absolutely. Yeah. If you're worried about him striking out, you have any doubts? No. So if Davey has confidence that Rogers going to put the ball in play, he'll start the runner. Here he goes. And he's confident that Bernardino won't swing at a bad pitch either. So the Nats get a base hit and a walk. And they're putting some pressure on the Mets here to try to close this game out. Tomorrow, it's a matinee. R.A. Dickey, 8-1 with a 269 ERA. And he went the distance on a seven-hit shutout his last time out against St. Louis. Jim Ming Wong. He'll make his second start. He's one and one with a 6.43 ERA, and two and two in four career starts against the Mets. Johnny and Ray Nets extra 12:30. FP and I at one. First pitch is 105. Before the Nets head to Boston. By the way, 
notable that Jesus Flores now also has an eight game hitting streak. His career high is nine back in 08. He might have tomorrow off. He's been grinding, catching every single day, day game after a night game. The other thing is, you go into the American League, those games tend to take a while, and he'll be working hard in Boston and Toronto. We might see Mini Pudge tomorrow. Jonathan Solano. We liked his energy in Florida. We liked the way he controlled the game, threw very well, got a good swing. We like watching him play. On 0 2, La Bardosi goes out of the zone to strike out. And here comes Bryce Harper. He's had an impact on this game with a good catch in the first inning, reaching on an air, stretching one bag into two, scoring a run, singling, stealing a base. And he's not done yet, maybe. Other than that, he's done nothing. Yeah, it's been a quiet one for four. <laughs> And we used to talk about with Michael Morris last year is must see TV every at bat and I think the same applies for Bryce this year. Whatever you're doing at home you stop you sit down and you watch the at bat regardless of the score regardless of the situation you want to see this guy hit. And the other thing is you can't really play any kind of shift on Bryce Harper now because he's going to left and left center so well. He wants that one back. He got a cookie right down the middle. From Miguel Batista and fouled it straight back. He was on it. And that might be the last fastball he sees in this AB. Jesus Flores on second base, stretching out that hamstring, making sure it stays loose. Harper, left field. It's going to carry to the sliding Scott Hairston. Well, the Nats came close. So here we go, top of the ninth. Clifford is on to try to save this one. First inning, Adam LaRoche sitting on a curveball. was supposed to be down and away. It was down and in. And that's the turbo zone fight, folks. He likes the ball close to him. Rolled this one all the way out of the ballpark. A three-run jack. And the Nats haven't looked back since. Hey, fans. Remember, your Washington area Lexus dealers are donating $200 to Children's National Medical Center every time a Nationals player hits a home run this season. Roger Bernardino will stay in and play left field, and uh, 
Steve Lombardozzi out of the ball game. So the pitcher's hitting first, and that is Tyler Clippard. Four saves in his last five appearances. Not opportunities, appearances. So four straight. And he will face Lucas Duda, Daniel Murphy, and Ike Davis for the Mets in the ninth. David Wright is out of the way after that line drive he hit to Michael Morse to end the eighth. Lucas Duda asking for a new baseball right there. The throw down to second base between innings from Jesus Flores to Danny Espinosa hit the dirt. And hitters will look for that. If a ball hits the dirt on the throw down to second, they'll ask for a new baseball because they don't want to scuff baseball in a pitcher's hand. You don't think a catcher would do that on purpose, do you? Sometimes, yeah. That's why you have to pay attention in the on deck circle when you're leading off an inning. I always used to watch the throw down to second base. If it bounced, you ask for a new baseball. Nice. Change up. He gets the call at the knees. One ball, one strike. That's important for Tyler to get that from Wally Bell. Duda 0 for 2 with an RBI grounder, a walk. Nats are trying to get back to that coveted 10 games over 500 mark. Phillies are trailing at home in the eighth, five to four. Atlanta has beaten the Marlins in Miami, two to one. Two one pitch. Fastball just missing. And one thing we learned from the Mets last night, and we've seen from them all season long, is they're not going away. They don't roll over for anybody. Pumping in a fastball, 94 for a strike. So important to retire the first man. Absolutely so important to go right after the first man. Well, he lost it on the fastball. So the time run into the batter's box now with Daniel Murphy. I think Tyler Clipper did the same thing last night. Came out of the bullpen, threw a lot of off-speed pitches, painted himself into a corner. Yeah, he walked Ike Davis leading off the ninth. And you have a two-run lead. And if you're Tyler Clipper, just go right after guys until they show you they can hit your fastball. Establish that fastball, and everything works off of that. And right now that fastball is sailing up and away. So as a hitter. You might think he's going to throw some sort of touch pitch to get himself back into the strike zone here. And slow himself down get back to his release point stay back. And he flies open again. A good trip by Flores right here. He saw something. He's going to tell him. You're flying open. Keep your front side closed. Whatever it is, Jesus Flores is a coach on the field. And Steve McCaddy going to come out too. To you, whatever Jesus Flores said, Steve McCaddy's probably saying pretty close to the same thing. Even all stars have to be reminded of basic things. It's something mechanical, something to do with the release point, maybe flying a little bit. Big pitch here. Maybe gets a bit of a break on a fastball that was a little bit up and away. A break, but 
Wally Bell's been out there all night long. <laughs> yeah, he got a break. He's been wide away to left-handers all night. So the zone is consistent. Both teams know that, and you got to protect that with two strikes especially. Not sure I've seen Clippard go this many pitches without going off speed. That is right in there. Another fastball. And the count's back even. And Tyler Clifford, such a smart pitcher, and you tell him one thing, he puts it right to use. Steve McCaddy goes out there, tuned him up, fixed him. And you see the results, two strikes in a row with the fastball. And a 2 2 pitch. He gets a fly ball to center. Harper tracking it. And that is a huge comeback from 2 0 to get the first out. Johnny and Ray are in the house tonight. Tune in to Nats Extra Postgame Show presented by W.B. Mason when this one is over. There's a good hitter standing in the way, though. Ike Davis, two walks and a double tonight. Busted an 0 for 13. With a good looking opposite field gap shot back in the seventh. Mike Davis has hit into four double plays this year. Good fastball hitter. So we'll see if he switches to some off speed here. First pitch changeup. Had him out ahead. This could do it. Desmond. And the ball gets away from LaRoche. The runner will go to second. They'll have to give Ian Desmond an error. And the Nats came within a few inches of ending the game. 4-6, E6. I thought you called it, Carp. A little 4-6. And in the three part, Desmond got hung up. I think he tried to baby that throw over there, getting wide. He kind of went with the throw, and he pulled it. That's as far as LaRoche can stretch right there, and the Mets are still alive. And a very rare two-error night for the Nats. That'll give Josh Tolley a chance. Adam LaRoche was trying everything he could to stay on the bag to turn the double play. In a one-run game, he probably comes flying off the bag to save that. To save you 90 feet. Absolutely. It still boils down to the pitcher and the batter now. By the way, give Lucas Duda some credit for going after Ian Desmond, too. One ball, no strikes. Clipper delivers outside corner. Counts even. Starting to really locate that fastball better now. If you got your pinpoint command on... And your Jesus Flores and Tyler Clifford, you could expand that zone away right now. Wally Bell's given a good couple of inches on the outer half. He's been doing it all night. Looks like they're going to try to go there again. That's a changeup. Well hit to right. Michael is there. The Nats will be in a position to sweep tomorrow. And they get Edwin Jackson a badly needed win on Tyler Clifford's fifth save of the year. And just a great night for Edwin Jackson. A night when he needed to go deep into a ball game. His team used a whole bullpen the night before. He went out and hit seven strong innings. And you got to tip your cap. Just another big win for the Nats. Another big series win for the Nationals. Now they've beaten the Mets four out of five this year. And eight of the last nine.